Hello, welcome to this video. Um, if you're not into numbers and spreadsheets, you can bail bail out on this right now. But um, if you are interested in that kind of thing, please stick with me. As you would have seen in the news recently, um, there's been some uh, quite high inflation coming into the uh, UK and American markets. Uh, the CPI is at like 2.1 here in America, it's like 5%. I think that's a bit of an underestimate, but um, obviously there's some economists saying it's transitory um, because of various factors. It's fair enough. It's, it's a good argument. I, I think it might be a little bit more permanent than that, but we'll see. Um, but it got me thinking um, about carting and how inflation has affected carting and cart prices in general. Um, so this is a very sort of kind of overview of things. We can obviously look at more details. In, be a bit, you know, obviously look at it in a bit more detail and, and reference sort of like disposable income and so it's like relative wealth between now and then and or, or sort of prices of steel and that kind of stuff but that would be a bit too complicated and I'm too lazy for that but I wanted to sort of discuss this because I kind of think it's quite interesting so what I wanted to do was look at the basic difference in cost between a cart that you'd buy now brand new versus a cart you'd buy in 1990 because 1990 is a sort of good year for carting really um so what was it, 30, 31 years ago? So, um, and just compare the prices, really. Now, there's a, there's factors here at play, like that. I'm, I'm sure people will bring it up. Like, uh, for example, a Rotax Max now stock is a, is a certain price, but you know, some people might. You, you can't tune a Rotax Max, but you can certainly buy a good one with selected parts and, and that kind of stuff. So. You know, this is just comparing the base costs, and I'm going to extrapolate a little bit more from that. But it's just to give an overview of the price differences. Um, so what I did is well, I looked at a couple of websites, got some basic costs. Um, so I got some prices from KKC. So I think their prices are kind of reflective of the general market. There doesn't seem to be much price competition in in carting in the UK. Um, there's not much room for manoeuvre anyway. So and I I've got a couple of extras. So like I got the TKM BT82 tag from Talco's website and MS Cart from Jack Dix's website. And I also took some prices from the March edition of um, Carting Magazine in 1990. So um, just some rough prices to give a kind of comparison. So first of all, we have a look at the prices of a modern car and modern engines. Um, which you can see here. So I know this is a spreadsheet. If you're not into this sort of thing, I can imagine it'd be quite dull and quite boring. So just tough, live with it. So um, I don't know. I put 2019 comp cart here because it's advertised as that. I think that might just be the mollegation. I'm not sure. Um, so like a comp cart nowadays is is 3,080. So these prices are not including VAT. Um, the VAT prices here. I think in the magazine, Kite magazine in 1990. I think when I saw the one of the adverts saying plus 15% VAT, so that's what I've put into the spreadsheet. But we're going to compare non-VAT at the moment and have a reference to VAT so we can see how much the government's rinsing you for. So like a com car is like 3,080. OTK is 3,200, um, and an MS car is 2,995. So MS car sort of the cheapest or the, the least expensive chassis out there. Um, which I, I think is a pretty decent deal, to be honest with you. So, you know, if you include VAT and, you know, you look at like 3, 6, 3, 8, 3, 3, 5, 9, 4. So these, these prices aren't no joke. Do you know what I mean? These, these are real, real prices. So, you know, the, the, I've also added the price with an X30 with a Rotax as well to give a price of sort of like a complete cart. So like a Rotax Max complete is like 1968 um, with the VAT, it's like 2,300. I mean, these are significant sums of money. I'm the X30 and Rotax, pretty much the same price. TKM is 1600 without VAT. I think the TKM, in my opinion, is, uh, I don't know, seems a bit mad spending 1,918 quid. That's with VAT for what effectively is a, an engine that's over 30 odd years old in design. Um, but they've added touch and go and electric stars and all that. But yeah, um, seems quite pricey to me. Uh, so chassis from 1990 so if we look at sorry if we go back to the actual complete prices for a cart nowadays you can see that they're hovering in the six thousand pound realm which is in my opinion is, is quite a lot of money i remember a number of years ago i think when when carts complete were like four and a half five grand we thought that was quite expensive so these are these are big big numbers for a brand new cart um and now remember this is all kind of stock we're not looking at you know 
that you, you can spend a lot of money finding good engines, but that, that's harder to analyze on a spreadsheet. So let's have a look at the chassis. So we've got a Jetta or Jetta. I don't know if they make cat chassis anymore, actually, but um, America, the Sprint car. So the Sprint, is it was quite a ubiquitous car in the 80s and 90s. Um, funny enough, it's sort of out of fashion now in the retro scene, but it's a good enough car. My brother had a Sprint in 1987, 88. So quite familiar with it. So the price is here. Obviously, we have to adjust for inflation. There's the Bank of England's inflation adjuster from 1990 to 2020. We don't have a 2021 rate adjuster just yet. So, yeah, that would probably bump these figures up quite a lot. <laughs> so, but these prices, I don't think, have changed since last year all that much. I think they're the same. I think they'll be going up soon, though. So I think these prices haven't changed at all this year. Um I think they're kind of stabilised. I might be wrong, but so yeah, the Sprint is coming at like five nine two. The Jetta is like these are Britain chassis. So it has to be remembered that back then it wasn't just simple. You know, you had one chassis. You had Britain. You had national hundred national hundred Britain and hundred Britain chassis regulations were slightly different. So, but overall, like a national chassis which is comparable to today, more than anything, uh, came at six eight nine. Now we plug it into the inflation adjuster and we're coming out at. 1,601 quid in today's money which compared to like you know that's just sort of half of an OTK so it's um it's a hundred percent more expensive buying an OTK than it would have been buying a sprint chassis in 1990 um inflation adjusted I mean if you add the VAT we're up at 1800 so not insignificant numbers um but still significant so as you can see here there's a big difference between what car chassis were costing then and what they're costing now. Now, back then, we um, I'm not sure if these chassis came with pods. Sometimes they sometimes they were listed with side pods, but you didn't have Nassau panels selling at 180 quid. You didn't have rear bumpers that were sort of homologated. You didn't have side bumpers and that kind of stuff at the same prices um, back then because they just didn't exist. So that, that sort of explains some of the bump. Um, you would think that maybe the um, costs of manufacture would come down, especially with OTK, because they do sort of robot welding and that kind of stuff, but we don't see that reflected in the price. So the prices have gone up uh, in real terms by about 100%, roughly, by 80 to 100% in real terms. Engine-wise, engine, engine -wise, it's a bit more complicated because like a Rotax Max is a Rotax Max uh, stock, but back then you might you had 100 Britain, you had 100 National, and tuning options and that kind of stuff generally speaking like sometimes you'd be offered a sh uh, an engine and then it'd say plus 100 quid for a tune so you could add 100 quid and there you know some people might you know you might have bought a rotax dsc you know or would it be a dsb in 1990 and say you know, a real top top one might be a bit more expensive but these are the numbers that were in the magazine and give you give us a rough idea so like you'd see stuff like um like 100 britain solo tt42 and then it'd be a tt42 plus a tune and then it's a tt42 for 100 national and then tt42 with a tune and then a tsv 80 and then a ts50 britain and then tsv so you've got these different options which are quite complicated um but generally speaking if you're starting the sport new you'd you'd probably be doing 100 britain you'd get a tune on it 100 quid clean it up a bit and, you know and you're coming out uh, a baby 1199 whereas a rotax max complete is 1968 and x30 is 1979 so there's a big price difference there in terms of cost new if you're looking at the 100 national thing um the most expensive one i found which was a solo tt42 was like yeah, this is inflation adjusted by the way um, you can see the price here non-inflation adjusted but inflation just is like 13 45 compared to so, so we, we're seeing like a 600 quid difference um and that's kind of explained partly because these are water-cooled engines and they have starter motors and, and that kind of stuff. The, so you could say that in terms of pure in sort of price increase, it's not so drastic as, as chassis, but it's, it's interesting anyway um, how much difference there is. Um, a lot of people complain that engine rebuilds happened a lot more back then, which is, which is fair enough, but in like Britain you were running YBNs, so tyres would last longer. Ready chassis kind of probably lasted longer a bit, bit uh, as well. I'd, I'd never heard anyone talking about in Hundred Britain about tweaking the chassis, and so like the, the disposability of the the engines, I guess in in the nineties was offset by the non disposability of the chassis and the tires. Uh, you know, and complete carts. Um, I don't know a Sprint National. 
you know, a top spec, I guess, relatively speaking, in, in today's money, you were looking at, in today's money, I mean, uh, you're looking at 3,387, so roughly like maybe 55% lower than an X30. So we've seen this big movement in karting towards sort of like the obsession with single make and lower costs, but what we have seen is in real terms an increase of roughly 80 to 100% in prices, and I just thought that was kind of, quite interesting modern carts have a lot of ancillaries to them starter motors radiators side pods and that kind of stuff and i think um in terms of tools needed you need more tools nowadays um, and maybe more expertise oddly enough so and all the the stuff like pods takes up more room and, and that kind of stuff it's a lot more difficult to go karting nowadays in a car on a roof if you've got all that stuff to pack in your car as well so these this explains, even though I do stuff like the budget challenge and trying to prove carting is cheap, there has been a, a big increase in price, I guess, over the last 30 years in real terms when we, we adjust for inflation. Now, there are factors like steel cost and import cost and that kind of stuff, um, factory costs and wage costs and that kind of stuff. But in anyway, interesting nonetheless. I'm sorry this is just, you're just looking at a spreadsheet here, but um, anyway hope you enjoyed the video um like and subscribe and um yeah interesting interesting if you enjoyed the video please make sure you like and subscribe if you'd like to support the channel please check out the links below to our patreon page and paypal and also the links to our merch store on teespring thanks for watching